Okay, I said I'd share an extension activity with you this week. Um, based on, so extending the activity that we, um, that I shared with you last week, which was making these little mini, mini artist books. Um, and I wonder how many of you have had a go at this now. It's a really nice little activity for exploring how quiet and busy can interact really beautifully in paintings, how we need both. We need busyness and we need quiet to achieve sort of balance and harmony just as we do in life. And if you haven't had a go at these um, and, you, and you're not sure what I'm talking about, maybe you've, you're seeing this video um, and haven't seen the other one, if you head to guides or announcements um, in the group, you'll find the link there. Um, and if you like doing things at a small scale, this is a really nice little activity um, to try. This week, I'm um, inviting you to work bigger, but with the same principle. The idea of starting busy and then um, choosing where this this week's task is a little bit different because this one was very kind of random what you ended up with uh, when you cut your shapes what showed underneath was very random and there's something really nice about that this week's activity um, invites you to be a bit more selective and make some decisions about which areas of busyness you want to um, cover up and which you want to keep. So it's just the same process. So I did my busy, busy painting first, uh, really went for it with making lots of really busy marks, just having a lot of fun uh, with mark making, different sizes uh, and, and um, you know, nice variety of sizes of brush marks and using my drawing materials again. Um, and then having the experience of of covering up and quietening down areas in this in, uh, in uh, of what I've done. So um, these you mm, I suggested you do monochrome, which was um, you may or may not have done. Um, but for this uh, version, I worked with a three color. Well, I worked with black and white, and I worked with pyrrole red. This really nice strong red. And then for the layer that I've covered with. I mix these three together. So you'll also notice how beautifully these colours work together. And um, this these lovely sort of grey pink with these reds and blacks. So this is also a nice um, uh, task to experience one of the kind of simplest principles of colour of colour harmony, which is the idea that if we limit the tubes of paint that we use and mix colours um, using those you know, so that simple range, uh, we end up with, guaranteed to end up with colours that harmonise. So, um, opportunity to work with colour and with scaling up, working bigger as well. I've worked on a two size paper here, which is um, four times printer paper size. I find it a really nice size to work at when I want to kind of get fresh and um, loose and expressive and, and, and you know have the experience of working in a really nice bold way it's a good size to work with um, and uh, if you're going to work at this scale you don't want to be being mean and tight about the paint how much paint you're using it's one of the things I remember I used to get into when I was first painting um, was worrying about how much paint I used uh, we need to be generous with our paint um, you know, uh, otherwise we get tight with the way we paint if we're being tight with our materials. So a good opportunity if you've got some old paints or some cheap paints that you don't mind using up. This, I've got some of this Kryler paint. I like these Kryler paints, but I do find they tend to dry up in the tube. Um, so I often find I'm in a position of wanting to use some of these up, uh, which is why I chose this nice bright Pyrrol red for this one. And you'll know, obviously you'll need a palette, um, some water. You'll also need to think about scaling up your paint brushes. So this is one of the simplest ways we can scale up, um, you know, get bigger and bolder with painting is to use much bigger brushes. So for this size, um, I've got a two inch um, decorator's brush. And I really like this size. I use these a lot. I've got lots of these brushes in my paintbrush collection. Um, and I do recommend if you want to get some, it's worth getting looking for natural bristle if you can find it. it they are nicer than the um, 
synthetic bristles, but any will do, especially for an exercise like this. So um, this principle about layering paint, um, it's a, this is a really good exercise in having the experience of layering paint. And one of the things we have to think about is about being willing to sacrifice um, things that we've already done, marks that we've already made, maybe things that we really like. We've got to be prepared to cover up. And this idea about layering paint and, um, is something that I teach on uh, the Adventurous Painters Programme, which I'm promoting at the moment. Um, the booking for that closes at the end of this week on Friday the 3rd. So if you're thinking about maybe whether you might want to um, be part of that group, um, now's the time to get booked on. We've got a really nice group, lots of people coming back um, from last time for more. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to welcoming some of you who've booked and are coming on for the first time. Um, so there's a lot on that program that I teach about layering. It's so freeing when we start realising that actually we can just keep building up successive layers in a painting as I've done uh, with this one. Um, and there's only two layers, obviously, in this one. There's the underpainting and then my quiet layer. Um, but of course, I could come back now and put more of my red over the pink, more of my white over this pink. And I may do that actually at the end of this video if it doesn't end up too long. Um, because we can really start, it's so liberating when we start working with layers in this way. Um, because we can ditch the fear of making marks that look wrong or putting paint on and it looking wrong. Um, I really now know that some of the most interesting parts of paintings that I've made um, are bits that have gone wrong, basically where I've made a mark that I just think, I mean, I almost do it intentionally now um, because I know that my paintings are going to have lots more interest if there are areas in them where I've basically gone wrong or I've put on something really weird. And then when I've worked with successive layers, those areas can often show through and be the most exciting kind of rich parts of paintings. So um, this idea about layering, um, sacrificing, covering up, not being afraid to cover up uh, is so valuable to get a hold of. And um, but it does take we have to we have to build that muscle of not being precious about things that we've already done. Um, and potentially covering up, you know, areas of paintings that we may already really love, and feel quite attached to. Um, so this is a really good exercise in having that experience. Gives you that experience of not being afraid to cover up and just seeing what happens when we do. As I've done with this very simple piece here, but I think you'll agree, it really shows how we can start showing bits of a painting off and how bits that we leave revealed become all that much more interesting when we've got these sort of quiet areas around them. So I'm going to get set up and I'll do a bit on, the, on, the, on uh, this one for you um, so that you can see it, see the process. Okay, so all I'm going to be doing um, really with this next stage is just looking for areas of this painting that I want, that I'm liking, areas that I'm going to leave revealed. So I really like this area with these little red dots and this black here. So I think that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to accept that some of this that I've done is going to get covered up. I've mixed a nice sort of grey pink with my black and my white and I'm just getting some paint on here really. just working around and I might want to just reveal some little areas of things that I've done and then cover some areas up completely. I mean this is, you know, this is looking already, do you see how this starts getting revealed? If I want to I can work with a, you know, an edging tool and just go for a straight, some sort of straight line across here and just leave something fairly randomly revealed or a line even, just some sort of shape. Interesting shape that could get revealed here. Hope 
hoping I'm not obscuring this as I'm filming here. Just lightening my colour off a little bit here. You know, we can we can have this area, this, this quietness, but still with a bit of variety. So I'm just thinking about again what I want to keep, and this is these two shapes here are quite interesting, I think. And I think I might just keep these two of these little shapes, these little sort of wheel shapes here. So I'm really not being afraid to cover up a lot of what I've already done. And some of it is just showing through in places here, through my paint. I'm just thinking about what I might want to keep busy. You know, I might just, I think I might keep this area. This is a busy area up here. Maybe some of this. I, think I might just keep those two sort of wheel shapes on this side because they're rather just rather nice and I want to show them off so I can get rid of lots of what I've done covering up it's quite interesting now I've got this nice sort of line of shapes coming through here I think I might just take a little bit of this out up here, just so these three shapes are a bit more revealed. How much do we want to sacrifice? How quiet do we want to go? I was feeling really brave. I could cover everything up, maybe except for that area, or maybe a little tiny bit down here. Because I can always come back. I can always come back and make it busier again. Just playing around with my pink here, lightening it off a little bit. And I think I might just sort of see what kind of shapes I could reveal in this area. Maybe some smaller shapes here just come through. And these lovely colours that harmonise so nicely together. So I think that's a much more interesting composition now um, because it's got this balance. It's got this nice balance and variety of busy and quiet areas in it. Um, and these lovely colours. We're going to be starting on the Adventurous Painters programme. We're going to be starting with colour this term. I'm going to spend quite a few weeks thinking about, um, I'm calling it Colours of the Soul. It really is thinking, starting to think about how we can use colour to create meaning in our paintings, how, how we can uh, draw on our own associations with different colours um, and uh, make paintings that have a personal meaning for us because they use colour that has, a, uh, has meaning. And how we're going to be thinking about colour harmony, um, because we're going to be thinking a lot about how we show those colours off. Um, I know that I'm interested in working with a kind of um, yellowy, mustardy green. It has a lot of associations for me. Um, and uh, so I ha then how can I think about how to show that colour off? How I can use it in a painting, how I can create harmony with that colour. There's a lot of emphasis on sort of thinking about meaning, personal meaning in paintings on this next module. Um, I'm going to be thinking about colours of the soul, 
Mark making from the heart is the next theme. Um, how we can get really expressive with our mark making in a way that sort of comes from comes from the heart. And then we're going to be thinking very much about shapes and symbols, um, um, how we can, um, you know, uh, use simple shapes and symbols in our work um, that have relevance and meaning for us personally. This is how we can start making really original, um, original and unique paintings that no one else would have ever thought of. And there's going to be a big emphasis on sketchbooks, keeping sketchbooks, on doodling, just letting ideas come to us. Um, so um, it's going to be a really good module. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, as I say, do, do get booked up if you haven't. Make sure you do get a place this week. Um, and I, what I'm going to do now with this, I'm going to take this, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you how you can do a third layer on this if you want to. Okay, well, I've come back to this one as the other one's not dry because I thought I could have a play with this one and I've just been playing with adding some more busyness, you know, just toing and froing between more, more busyness. Maybe over here, this could become a really busy area and where I want more quietness. It's quite fun to play with doing another layer on this. Just bringing some white in here, back in here. Think about this area being really, really busy. Maybe coming in with my pink and really quietening this area off. sacrificing what I've already done just so I know I've got some really quiet space space to rest in this painting a bit more more covering up so I can start really thinking about zones, busy zones and quiet zones. How I can come back with my busy, busy colours. Maybe just carrying some things on that I've done before. more of my drawing. So if you want to do a third layer, you can come back, come back with your original colours. Think about what you want to make busier again. Adding pattern. So have some fun with this task. This this is a really good good practice to think about alternating between busying and quietening, busying up and quietening down a painting, what we can cover up, what we want to reveal. And as ever, do share what you do in the group. I look forward to seeing what you do with this task and more of the little tiny books as well, if you fancy doing some.